before going to equivalent circuit you must know about the transformation from one side to another side So this is a simple transformation technique that is here you are having R1 on primary side, R2 on secondary side. So in what way you will transform R2 to R2 dash? What is this R2 dash means? Secondary side resistance. on primary side secondary side resistance on primary side so by using transformation ratio k you will transform this secondary side resistance to primary side resistance so r2 dash is equal to r2 by k square so here you will get one more resistance that is r2 dash and combinedly these two are called as r01 r01 in the sense r1 is already existing resistance and r2 dash is a secondary resistance on primary side in the same manner you will consider the resistance along with the inductance okay so here you will get Z01, which is Z1 plus Z2 dash. Z2 is nothing but Z2 by k square. So here Z2 is nothing but R2 plus Jx2. So here you will get the impedance value of total transformer on one side. So, what is the necessity of this one? The necessity of equivalent circuit is the calculation made simple. That means only the transformer parameters are taking as a lumped one. So, that means the secondary side values also existing at the primary side. Actually, you are not in a position to move the resistance of secondary side to primary side but our convenience to make the simple calculations we are dealing with that transformation from one side to another side by using transformation ratio so r2 dash is equal to r2 by k square x2 dash is equal to x2 by k square z2 dash is equal to z2 by k square by using the transformation ratio we are transforming the values from one side to either side. If you are requiring on primary side, you will transform by using this formula. If you want to move the primary side values to secondary side values, then you will multiply with k square. So there is a simple logic at that point. If the transformer is having N1 turns on primary side, N2 turns on secondary side. If you are getting confusion whether it is divided with k square or multiplying with k square, one simple logic is there that when the number of turns is more, automatically the length is more. When the number of turns are increasing, the length is more. When the length is more, resistance is more. So if you are having 
R2 value, suppose some 10 ohms. Suppose the N1 is more than the N2. Here one important point that N2 is greater than N1, it is called as a step up transformer. Actually, it is a voltage step up transformer, but for our convenience, we are always using the words step up and step down. If you are not mentioning that either it is voltage or current, it is a voltage step up transformer. So, if it is a voltage step up transformer, it is a current step down transformer. So, if the number of turns are more when compared to secondary side, the primary side turns are more, that means the length is more, the resistance will be more. In what way you will get the resistance of higher value from secondary side to primary side? Means, suppose here you are having 10 turns, here you are having 5 turns. What is the transformation ratio 5 by 10? That is 0 0.5. So, here by dividing the k square value, that is 0 0.5 square value, then you will get the resistance of higher value at the primary side. This is the logic to remember the formula of transformation. Okay, after completion of equivalent circuit, you are having testing of transformers. Actually, according to our syllabus, we are having OC test and SC test which is called as open circuit test and short circuit test. So, what is open circuit test? Let us draw the circuit diagram for open circuit test. Here, this is the circuit diagram for open circuit test. Why you are doing this open circuit test and short circuit test means to calculate the efficiency and regulation of a transformer. In what way you are calculating by using these two tests means by using these two tests, you will get the iron losses and copper losses. So, whenever you are getting the losses, so you will calculate efficiency of the transformer without placing the actual load on the transformer. So here one important point related to open circuit test and short circuit test is you are not placing the load at different parts of the loads of the transformer. That means simply you are calculating the values from two single tests. That means open circuit test and short circuit test for this and this one you are taking only one set of readings so here you are having a auto transformer or variac and here you are connecting this to voltmeter wattmeter and ammeter here you are having two sets of windings primary winding and secondary winding but at the time of dealing with the tests you must consider the LV side and HV side of the transformer. Actually, either side of the transformer, you will connect the meters. But for our convenience, most of the times, for our convenience, we are connecting the meters on low voltage side and we are open circuiting on high voltage side. That is the reason I am drawing the number of turns here equal. Actually, if you want to give the connections on HV side, 
it is also preferable but for convenience that means if it is a 110 volts by 220 volts transformer by varying this variac the open circuit test basic principle is to maintain the rated value that means here in this one lv side is 110 volts if you are connecting the meters on low voltage side you will get the rated value of 110 volts if you are connecting the meters on high voltage side it is 220 volts you have to vary the variac or auto transformer to get the value of rated value if it is low voltage side 110 volts if it is high voltage side 220 volts that is the reason the circuit is meters are connected at the lv side for a open circuit test because you have to maintain the rated voltage low voltage side you are having low voltage that means 110 volts is preferable when compared to 220 volts that is the reason you are giving the connections on low voltage side and you are open circuiting on high voltage side so here you will get the value of v naught w naught and i naught by observing the readings of voltmeter wattmeter and ammeter in what way you are getting the values means if you are connecting the 110 volt side vary the auto transformer up to the old meter reads 110 volts then you will take a set of readings of volt meter watt meter and ammeter those values are taking from those readings v naught w naught and i naught and already you are having one formula w is equal to v i cos phi so, you know the value of W, V, I, cos phi. So, from the wattmeter reading, you are having W reading, V reading, I and the wattmeter, voltmeter, ammeter readings and you will calculate the value of cos phi. Once you know the value of cos phi value, you will calculate I naught, cos phi naught, I naught, sin phi naught. Already we discussed at the place of transformer on no load phasor diagram iw working component of current and magnetizing component of current i naught cos phi naught and i naught sin phi naught by observing these two values you will calculate the required values of losses in the open circuit test you are getting iron losses along with a small amount of copper losses because the secondary side of the circuit is open circuited so let us start the short circuit test. The circuit diagram for open circuit test and short circuit test are same with the simple difference that is here in the previous section it is open circuited and in this section it is short circuited. Here also same manner either side of the transformer you will connect the meters and short circuit but preferably on high voltage side you are connecting meters and the low voltage side you are short circuiting why because here we have to apply the rated current rated current so when the high voltage side is having low current that is the reason we are connecting those meters on high voltage side to get lower value of current and in the same manner you are varying the auto transformer up to the ammeter reading gives you rated current value then you will take a set of readings of voltmeter wattmeter and ammeter so in the same manner wsc short circuited power vsc short circuited voltage isc short circuited current by using these three values you will calculate the copper losses of a transformer here the open circuit test and short, short circuit test already conducted and taken the results of iron losses copper losses and here you will get the efficiency efficiency formula is output by input what is the output 
so from input you are giving from input side that is primary side you are giving input and you are getting output at the secondary side so either side you are giving the supply either side you are taking load where you are connecting supply that is primary side where you are taking the load that is secondary side so here output by supply output plus losses or input minus losses by input because one system is there you are giving input you are getting output and this is losses what happens output plus losses is equal to input input minus losses is equal to output so here the formula is output by input output can be written as input minus losses output by output plus losses or input minus losses by input that means numerator is output and denominator is input input in the form of output output plus losses output plus losses or input minus losses that is output input minus losses by input so this is helpful for maximum efficiency condition what is what is the difference between efficiency and all day efficiency so here efficiency is output in watts or kilowatts divided by input in watts or kilowatts this will become efficiency eta so all day efficiency is output in kwh divided by input in kwh so along with these kw that means wattage you are having the time duration also how much time that equipment is working that is also considered in all day efficiency so here efficiency and all day efficiency are different because it is not having the time period and here it is having time period how much time you are using and finally the transformer rating is in kva thanks for watching video